In the first episode of SRPG Sapphix, I examined Heather, who at the time I believed to be the first canonical queer woman in Fire Emblem. At the end of the video, I asked my audience about other queer women to look at so that I would have an idea as to which Sapphix were popular and be able to make videos that people wanted to watch. I got a number of replies suggesting that I look at the gay subtext surrounding the character La Rochelle from Fire Emblem and the Sacred Stones, which at first surprised me because I didn't remember there being any gay subtext around here. But to be fair, it's been a while since I've played Sacred Stones while looking at the story, and I love La Rochelle, but she's not exactly a unit that I use on most runs, so I don't often see the depths of her support pool. As such, I decided that I would look into the supposed gay subtext around La Rochelle, and judge for myself if I was perhaps incorrect about Heather being the first Savic in Fire Emblem. I did not expect it at the time, but this sent me down a deep rabbit hole, and I came out the other side thinking that La Rochelle's sexual orientation is actually a more hotly debated topic than the ethics of Edelgard versus Dimitri. So, strap on in for a deep dive into the most chaotic character in all of Judgrul. We are investigating La Rochelle's sexual orientation. You see what I did there with investigate? I put gay inside of it. Yeah, that's actually a joke that I stole from Captain Astronaut. He is a much better YouTuber than I am, so uh, go check him out while you're at it. But uh, stay for this video, because I did a lot of work on it, and, I, and I'd like you to watch it. But then look at him. He's cool. Part 1. Is she straight? As we unfortunately live in a heteronormative society, I'm going to begin by looking for evidence that La Rochelle is not straight, as many people assume that a character is straight unless they are otherwise specified. I mean, heck, often people assume that characters are straight even when they are specified otherwise. Just look at all of the backlash The Last of Us 2 got for quote-unquote retroactively making Ellie a lesbian. The character who was 12 years old in the first game and also was confirmed to be queer in the DLC. But back to another potentially queer woman, let's talk about La Rochelle. The most common thing I saw pointed to was that in Erica's support, she invites herself to live in Renee and Erica says that they will go down in history as the best of friends. As anyone who is even remotely in touch with the queer community can tell you, it is a very common occurrence for historians to refer to pretty obvious lovers as besties or good friends or roommates. To the extent that, oh my god, they were roommates, is a meme within the LGBTQ community. As such, the line about being the very best of friends is often pointed to as very obvious queer subtext. And that's a fine reading of it, but the line on its own doesn't a lesbian make. After all, it could just be what it says on its face. They're going to be the best of friends. Platonic relationships are important, and we don't want to overwrite them with romantic ones. However, there's another part of the support conversation that I didn't see anyone bring up during my research, and that's kind of bizarre to me because it is much more explicit in terms of making La Rochelle a queer icon. Just a few lines prior to Erica talking about how they will be the best of friends, La Rochelle gave Erica a gem that had been passed down through her family for generations as a sign of how much she cares about Erica. Now, I almost feel condescending explaining this, but several cultures have this thing where in order to propose for marriage, you will give the person you're proposing to a ring that has a jewel on it. Oftentimes, those are rings that are passed down through family generations. You know, I'm going to use my grandmother's engagement ring, etc., etc. Uh, it really feels like La Rochelle was proposing to Erica right there. Which, with that context, the whole best of friends comment comes off as incredibly devastating. Like, imagine proposing to someone, and then they're like, Oh, I like you as a friend. Now, while the proposal may be sudden, La Rochelle's interest in Erica is not. In fact, as early as the sea support, La Rochelle talks about how the first thing she thought about when she laid eyes on Erica was that Erica was a lovely woman. Now, some of this is because of classism and how she could tell that Erica was a noble right from the very beginning, but I also think that talking about her as a lovely woman and then having an obsession with the fact that Erica needs to also find La Rochelle lovely is 
a little bit sus. Now, unfortunately, Erica is the only woman who La Rochelle has supports with, and throughout the main story, she's mostly interacting with men, specifically Renak and Dazla, but a couple of others on occasion as well. As such, there's not too much else we can investigate to look at her interest or lack thereof in women, but I think there's more than enough in the Erica support chain to support La Rochelle as some form of queer. This is not the actions of a straight woman. The fact that there's no paired ending between Erica and La Rochelle is definitely a little bit frustrating, but I don't think it at all runs counter to the idea of La Rochelle being sapphic. After all, Erica is not interested, but La Rochelle definitely is. I also just don't think that Intelligence Systems was willing to be as explicit as having them get married in a paired ending back in 2004. I mean, heck, even a few years later in Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, the queer representation all either suffered from subtext syndrome or a lack of paired endings. Pour one out for our homegirl Heather. But now that we've pretty firmly established that La Rochelle is definitely a card-carrying member of the Alphabet Mafia, we need to figure out exactly where in the acronym she belongs. The obvious choice would be lesbian, after all she has expressed interest in another woman. But does that hold up to scrutiny? Let's take a look. Part 2. Is she a lesbian? Thankfully, unlike women, there's no shortage of men in La Rochelle's life, so we have a lot of material to sift through. The two things that are most frequently pointed to as counter-evidence to La Rochelle being a lesbian are her marriages to Ephraim and Inez in their paired endings. However, those who believe that she is a lesbian will respond to this by saying that those were obviously marriages for political purposes. After all, it is a medieval-based game, and in medieval times people often got married for political purposes. Heck, there's even precedent for this in Fire Emblem, as Fire Emblem 4 features many characters who marry for political purposes or optimization purposes if you're a blue unit. In fact, if we examine La Rochelle's support with Inez, while it's not exactly hostile, I wouldn't call it the friendliest interaction either. This is, after all, the support chain that spawned the famous, were I not a holy woman, I would beat you senseless line. Although as an aside, some might say that Inez finds that proposal to be incredibly romantic. But the remainder of the support is mostly just them comparing their home countries to each other and trying to determine which one is better objectively. With La Rochelle eventually proposing that Inez, Erica, Ephraim, and La Rochelle should all travel together so that Ephraim and Erica can be the judges over which country is better between Freilia and Rouston. And while it's easy to say that she obviously just wanted an excuse to travel around with her girl crush Erica, I think she honestly wanted both of them there, because I think that there is a lot of evidence that La Rochelle also has a gigantic crush on Ephraim. Because while the paired ending marriage between La Rochelle and Inez seems to come out of nowhere, the one between Ephraim and La Rochelle does not. Sure, their support starts out somewhat confrontational, with La Rochelle suggesting that Ephraim is a little bit too reckless and should go attack a wall in humorous fashion. However, starting with the B support, there's a bit more there. La Rochelle suggests that Ephraim has scars and asks to see them so that she can heal them. Ephraim then immediately begins to disrobe in order to show her a shoulder scar, which causes La Rochelle to blush, freak out, and run away. In the A support, she explains that her freakout was because she had never seen a man's naked body before, even referring to his body as a well-toned body. And when Ephraim expresses that it was just his naked shoulder, La Rochelle explains that she was up all night thinking about it anyway. She then deflects with some insecurity about whether or not Ephraim finds her attractive before eventually running away in yet another freakout. This is schoolgirl crush behavior. It's all there. The obsession, the blushing, the freakouts. I think at the very least you have to admit La Rochelle has some amount of physical attraction to Ephraim, even if she is off-put by his personality. I would argue, however, that she's not as off-put by his personality as she says, and this is a little bit of the lady doth protest too much. However, even if you interpret this scene differently than I do, there is another reason why I don't think the defense of a political marriage would hold up when talking about La Rochelle's sexuality, and that is La Rochelle has never conformed to society's rules. Does she really seem like the sort of person that would enter into a marriage just for political reasons? 
Like sure, she talks about the importance of nobility at times, but at the end of the day, I just don't think she's the sort of person who would just go into a marriage for appearances or political reasons. She's too much of a free spirit for that. She refuses to stay at home and do her political duty, instead going out chasing monsters. You really think she's going to marry a foreign prince and let him tame her just because it's politically expedient? Preposterous. La Rochelle would never. However, even if after all of that you are willing to buy that La Rochelle simply marries Inez or Ephraim for political purposes, there's one other marriage that La Rochelle has that can't be explained away so easily, and that is Dazla. There is no politically expedient reason to marry Dazla. He is simply a mercenary who has been enthusiastically working with La Rochelle for basically the entire time that we've known them. He has no status, he has no noble bloodline, he has no relations or ties to other countries. He is just a mercenary who La Rochelle traveled with for a while and grew close to and ends up marrying. Granted, their marriage does come a little bit out of nowhere as their support chain is mostly just them having an enthusiastic friendship and venturing off together to do things that will be written into legend. However, honestly, this fits the two characters and their love story more than a built-up slow burn romance would. They just spend a lot of time adventuring together before realizing that they want to have a life together in a romantic sense as well. I think it works perfectly for our two crazy kids and I wouldn't have it any other way. Regardless of how sudden or normal you consider it, the existence of this marriage does, to my mind, thoroughly disprove the idea of La Rochelle marrying for political purposes. Which really only leaves us with one other argument for La Rochelle not being attracted to men that I see thrown around from time to time, and I have some problems with this argument, to be honest. The argument is that La Rochelle is a victim of compat, or compulsory heterosexuality, which is a real-life phenomena and theoretically could also happen in fictional locations like Judgirl. The basic idea of compat is that because we are in a straight-focused society and have straight-focused ideas and images pounded into us from birth, there will be many gay and lesbian people People who feel subconsciously compelled to participate in heterosexual activities. This is why oftentimes before coming out people will think that they are straight, and often lesbians and monosexual gay men will think that they are bi or pansexual before realizing that they are just homosexual. This is a real phenomena, and it goes beyond the scope of this video to break down all of the reasons for it but it is often used as an argument against La Rochelle being bisexual or pansexual or in any way interested in men. The argument goes that all of her interest in men comes from compulsory heterosexuality and that her only genuine romantic interest is in Erica. Look, I don't want to dismiss Compet altogether because it is a real phenomena. I mean, heck, I went through a phase where I thought I was bisexual probably because of compulsory heterosexuality. However, I think that we, especially as a lesbian community, are a little bit too quick to pull out the compet card when talking about bi people that we would rather be lesbian representation. And like, it's one thing to headcanon a character as a lesbian, that is perfectly fine, because that is your headcanon, and if it makes you feel more represented, that's awesome. However, pulling out the compet idea to try to disprove a character being bisexual is frustrating, and honestly a little bit biphobic, as the implication is that the attractions that they have to the gender that you wish they weren't attracted to are not genuine. All that being said, I don't think that La Rochelle is a victim of Compet. I don't think there's anything in the script that supports the idea of her being a victim of Compet, and honestly, again, much like with the arranged marriages, La Rochelle is such a free spirit, I don't think she's going to conform to society's expectations of relationships unless she wants to. That's not even getting into the fact that we can't even definitively say that Judd Girl is a heteronormative society. I mean, there's no portion of text that talks about systemic homophobia or any idea of just like heterosexuality being the norm, other than the fact that we are placing that there because that's the way that it is in our world. With all of that out of the way, I don't think that it's possible to deny that within the text, La Rochelle is definitely attracted to men. But she's also probably attracted to women. So where does that leave her? Part 3. So, just what is she anyway? 
So I've established that she likes women, and I've established that she likes men. The obvious conclusion is that La Rochelle is bisexual, right? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that. La Rochelle never uses the term bisexual, and for all we know, she could identify as pansexual, or polysexual, or any other multisexual label. However, I personally, and this is pure conjecture, think that La Rochelle does not label her sexuality. She sees no reason to. She doesn't play by society's rules, and she doesn't need to use society's labels to talk about things that are not society's business. From the moment she laid eyes on Erica, she was hopelessly in love. And from the first instance of Ephraim removing his shoulder guard, she got an enormous crush that she tried to deny but couldn't. She spent her entire life fighting alongside Dosla, and eventually that morphed into romance, probably spontaneously. In the build-up to her marriage with Inez, La Rochelle invited two other people she had a crush on, potentially hoping to form a polycule. La Rochelle denies and reinvents relationship norms. She does not feel the need to define herself for society, and I don't think that we should try to define her either. She's definitely unhinged enough to be a chaos by, but I really think that no label can fully articulate the queerness inherent in La Rochelle. La Rochelle is not gay, La Rochelle is not straight, she is not bi, she is simply La Rochelle and you should fear and respect her. But above all else, you should absolutely train her to 2020. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I just want to remind everyone, it is perfectly fine to have a headcanon around La Rochelle, and if you disagree with my conclusions, I'm happy to hear why it is that you feel that I am uncharitably or incorrectly interpreting the information. I'm just one girl, I'm trying to do the best I can with the evidence. Regardless, if you enjoyed it, I would love it if you hit like on the video, and if you're interested in more content like this, go ahead and click that subscribe button as well. Let me know in the comments if there is another queer icon you'd like me to take a deep dive into in the Fire Emblem series, and as always, have a wonderful day.